we performed an uh, elaborate study using fMRI and EEG, so polysomnography during sleep. And in the fMRI experiments, we uh, tried to induce novel emotional distress by uh, using a karaoke paradigm. So actually, we, a week before the experiments, we had the participants coming in to the lab and they had to sing Christmas songs. And then uh, a week later, we used fragments of, this, uh, of these songs to re-expose re them to the participants. But obviously, they were singing out of key. And also, we told them that we, as researchers, we were listening along. So that was inducing shame and embarrassment. And so then, during subsequent sleep, we measured their, uh, uh, their polysomnography using EEG. And then after sleep, we just repeated the same experiments. So then we could, re, uh, we could assess whether the re-exposure to these same emotional stimuli would show an adaptation with respect to the limbic circuits, and then assess whether any sleep variables in the middle could uh, yeah, explain that overnight decrease in you know, emotional responses. What we found is uh, that the, uh, the total time that people spent in the REM sleep periods was predictive of the decrease uh, of the amygdala response. And in addition to the effects of REM sleep, we found that when you have the non-REM period that precedes REM sleep, could support that function of REM sleep. So there was an, in our model, there was an interaction effect such that with more time that people spend in the transition to REM sleep, so that REM period before REM sleep, the better subsequent REM sleep was able to depotentiate the amygdala response. But also very importantly, we showed that with more arousals during REM sleep, we saw the inverse. So there was an inverse uh, interaction effect such that with more arousals during REM sleep, uh, the less uh, REM sleep was able to depotentiate uh, that amygdala response. And so, yeah, so the first part is very nice to understand uh, uh, the fundamental processes behind emotion regulation, but especially the last part with these cortical arousals, um, it's a very uh, interesting point with respect to clinical, uh, clinical samples because we, in our samples we also see an increased number of cortical arousals in insomnia disorder and also the literature shows that cortical arousals are very abundant in other psychiatric disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder uh, or depression for that matter. We found that supporting effect of non-REM sleep. Um, so most of the previous literature um, yeah, finds effects within sleep stages. So they kind of focus on one sleep feature and, uh, and tries to elucidate that one particular effect. But by using this integral approach, uh, which was actually yeah, quite new, uh, we could find that there are interaction effects between different sleep stages. Uh, for future plans, indeed, I think it's important to, um, yeah, to assess uh, in more detail what the fragmentation of REM sleep uh, uh, means and, and how, how it impacts the regulation of emotional distress. And so maybe for, uh, yeah, for more a clinical uh, application, um, I know, for instance, with post-traumatic stress disorder, they do these reactivation therapies. And there, um, I know some papers show good effects and some other papers show bad effects, so it could be that um, they should consider the fragmentation of REM sleep for the therapy to be successful.